Solar 3.0 just changed the entire industry. Photovoltaic excels were a game-changing innovation in solar energy generation. We were astounded to see that a gadget like a television screen can actually generate power. This was, however, a long time ago. With solar power technology, we've come a long way. Still, the technology's limitations are a matter of concern. That's why Solar 3.0 is here. Voltage is back to inform you about a whole new technology that is going to revolutionize this sector. Since the pre-industrial period, the Earth's temperature has risen by more than 1 degree Celsius. If present trends continue, if the current percentage of fossil fuels is maintained and the projection that energy consumption will double by 2050 is right, we will be a long way from keeping global warming below 2 degrees Celsius. Such phenomena will be terrible for the planet's climate and environment. The power generation sector, which is using conventional methods to generate electricity, is equally responsible for this damage to the environment. The combustion of coal, oil and natural gas produces waste flue gases, which are hazardous to the environment because they contain poisonous compounds. Apart from harming the environment, heat is emitted into the atmosphere to the tune of 60%, adding to rising global warming levels. Per megawatt hour of energy, about one ton of CO2 is released. It indicates that a 2000 megawatt super thermal power plant will emit 2000 tons of CO2 per hour, or 48,000 tons per day. Thermal power stations have a total installed capacity of 234 gigawatts, with coal-fired units accounting for 124 gigawatts. This has the potential to emit up to 2,976 million tons of CO2 into the atmosphere every day. The stats are high enough to describe the terrible situation we are in. That's why renewable energy sources must be utilized to generate power with less negative effects on the environment. It is feasible to generate power from renewable energy sources without emitting CO2, the primary contributor to global warming. Nature supplies a variety of renewable energy sources in large quantities. Several governments have already made arrangements to implement damage control measures. Many nations have opted to replace their aging super thermal power plants with mega-scale solar and wind-based power facilities. For grid stability, large-scale energy storage systems are being developed, alongside ultra-mega solar and wind parks to address swings in solar and wind power output that vary with time and season. Even though there are numerous sources of renewable energy, the world is focusing on solar power. But with the prevailing solar power technology, it's nearly impossible to power the world. There are major drawbacks to the technology, specifically in the photovoltaic cells. The first significant drawback of silicon photovoltaic cells is that they are produced from a material that is scarce in nature. While there is no scarcity of silicon in the form of silicon dioxide, removing the oxygen connected to it requires a great amount of energy. In an electrode arc furnace, Silicon dioxide is typically melted at 1500 to 2000 degrees Celsius. The energy required to power such furnaces imposes a basic lower limit on the cost of manufacturing silicon PV cells while simultaneously increasing greenhouse gas emissions. Today's solar power technology necessitates not only technological investment but also land acquisition to build solar farms that generate power for consumption. Another problem is that they lack the energy density to provide enough power to fulfill the industry's increasing demands. Moreover, silicon panels are brittle and stiff, making them unsuitable for transporting. In addition to that, the parts are still rather pricey when compared to some of the other technology alternatives. The weight of silicon solar cells is another major drawback. When silicon PV cells are flat and placed in huge, hefty panels, they perform optimally. However, such panels make large scale installations prohibitively expensive, which is why they are commonly found on roofs and massive solar farms. But is there any solution? Actually, yes. The solution is perovskite. Imagine a cheap perovskite crystal solution that can produce a solar cell so thin that it can power a house with just half a cup of liquid. The solar panel is light enough to balance on top of a soap bubble. This might be an exaggeration, but this is considered the solar energy's holy grail. Perovskites, a broad family of materials in which organic molecules, primarily consisting of carbon and hydrogen, bond with a metal like lead and a halogen like chlorine, in a three-dimensional crystal lattice, can be manufactured significantly more cheaply with fewer emissions. Manufacturers can make batches of liquid solutions and then incorporate perovskites as thin films on practically any shaped surface without using a furnace. 
The film itself is rather light. Synthetic perovskites are being recognized as promising economical foundation materials for high-efficiency commercial photovoltaics, and solar cells are now the most popular perovskite used. Perovskite PVs are continually being researched and improved, with the percentage of perovskites PVs increasing from 2% in 2006 to over 20.1% in 2015. Perovskite PV is expected to reach $214 million in 2025, according to experts. With an extensive study on perovskite solar cells, or PSCs, beginning in 2012, the power conversion efficiency of these has grown dramatically in a short period. According to lab simulations, photovoltaic devices utilizing PSCs have boosted their power conversion efficiency from 3.8% in 2009 to 25.2% in 2020, surpassing the highest efficiency achievable in traditional mono- or polycrystalline silicon cells. PSCs are the most rapidly developing solar cell technology in the photovoltaic industry right now. The goal is to enhance photovoltaic characteristics that influence PCE, such as short circuit currents, open circuit potential, and fill factor. The resultant tandem cells can break past the silicon photovoltaic performance barrier when placed on top of regular silicon solar cells. They can capture and convert certain sections of the sun spectrum, notably at the high energy blue end, into electricity. Thin film photovoltaic solutions with low cost is another advantage of this technology. It uses low-cost source materials that are widely available and manufacturing procedures that are simple. As we said earlier, the band gap of perovskite photovoltaics is very broad. This opens up the possibility of combining them with low band gap photovoltaic technology, resulting in increased efficiency, which is important in a highly competitive market where system prices are determined by efficiencies. Perovskite solar cells have several advantages, including flexibility, semi-transparency, thin film, lightweight, and cheap manufacturing costs. Perovskites began as a basic form of DSSCs, in which a perovskite was simply in a die, but the device structure has evolved toward a novel and potentially useful planar design system. In PV applications, perovskites have a substantial advantage over silicon because they respond to a wider spectrum of visible light frequencies converting more sunlight to energy than silicon. It claims to be one-fifth as efficient as top-of-the-line commercial panels. If implemented across the country, the total yearly power output of solar panels would increase by the same amount. However, the technology is not yet commercially ready, and perovskite solar cells will have to overcome several obstacles before they can achieve commercial success. These obstacles include the cells' durability, stability, and poor stability in humid air, as well as the risk that these devices will release lead, a highly toxic element, into the environment. It's unclear if perovskites will be able to withstand rain, wind, bright sunlight, and cold temperatures for the 25 years promised by silicon panels. Sarah Kurtz, a photovoltaics expert at the University of California, Merst, said, I wouldn't put all my eggs in this basket for solving the world's problems, but I also wouldn't rule it out. But experiments with PSC are still going on in full swing. In a variation of PSC, researchers at Iowa State University's Microelectronics Research Center replaced cations with inorganic elements like cesium. They also made the cells moisture sensitive by replacing iodine with bromine in the perovskite absorber material. However, it had the unintended consequence of lowering total efficiency. Innovations in material or processing technologies have been the key drivers for rapid device performance gains during PSC research. It's evident that after a few modifications, PSCs are going to take the solar power technology to a new high, to Solar 3.0. What's your opinion about this? Do you also think PSCs have a future? Let us know in the comments below. Having said that, we have reached the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If yes, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up. And it's high time for you to subscribe to the channel and turn the notification bell on to get all the updates on our works. See you soon. Until then, peace.